Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first installment of Tasting in the Dark 2014. This evening, we all have the rare, auspicious, and delectable pleasure of sitting next to Rick Grosinger, the man, the myth, the legend. Rick, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about yourself and why are you here tonight? Well, I'm here tonight because I was asked uh, about a month ago, so that's the real deal. Um, they've been kind enough to have me on the show uh, three or four times so far, and uh, I brought out uh, a real cool selection of some kind of off-the-wall things that we really love around the shop. Um, that's basically why I'm here. We would expect nothing less than some off-the-ball, wild-out-there kind of things. Okay, for those of you that don't know, Rick Grosinger, proprietor of Grosinger Wines in Yountville, you can be reached at? I can be reached at 800-356-3970. You can also uh, find us on our website at www.grosingers, which is G-R-O-E-Z-I-N-G-E-R-S.com. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is definitely a shop you actually want to seek out. First digitally, and then if uh, your footfalls can find their way to Yountville, it's always quite a little treat to step through that door. Okay, now, out there in cyber world, you know how this works. We grill these poor, sweet three souls who, I'm going to introduce them here to you in a minute. Um, a few of these fine folks we know from days past, some of this meat is fresh for the grilling. So without further ado, let's meet our contestants. Now then, Mr. Scott Barber, it's always a pleasure to see you. You, yeah, it's always good to be here. you smell terrific. So, what are you most excited about for this fine evening? Uh, I'm just excited to see what kind of crazy things that pop out of Rick's mind here. We'll see. That is a terrifying <laughs> thought. Now, I know you being a bit of a veteran or local in Yountville, uh, having traipsed through Grosinger's door maybe once or twice, is there a particularly memorable little moment that you uh, acquired something, smelled something, tasted something, or were just bloody terrified in that particular uh, venue? Oh, no. It's always just you never know what you're going to get when you go in there. So it's always fun to... Uh, to go in there and just uh, see what's what's going on. He's always got cool things open, and there's different stuff that you just don't find anywhere else. Like a box of chocolates, this guy. I love it. Okay, now, we've got some fresh meat. This is Nick. Everyone out there in Cyberland, say hi to Nick. Nick, please say hi to everyone out there in Cyberland. Hello, everyone in Cyberland. Where are you from, and what brings you to this fine table? I am from <clears throat> Portland, Oregon, and uh, I'm at this table because I love wine. I love buying wine. I'm excited to uh, have a wine shop that I can potentially buy more wine from because I live here in uh, St. Helena now. And um, my family has a vineyard in Amity, Oregon, and I sell French oak barrels, and that's sort of my credentials in the wine industry. He's being very modest. Uh, his family's been in the wine business through sales and other things for multiple generations, going all the way back to the old world. We'll delve into Nick's mind a little bit later. Uh, I think he's going to be the most fun for us to dissect. Moving down the line. Hananine, the seasoned veteran of the French Laundry, the maestro, the master, the unflappable. It is a great pleasure to have you here tonight. And uh, please introduce yourself to Cyberworld. Savvy World, good to be here. My name is Anani Lawson, and uh, I found this place through uh, DGA, who approached me a few weeks ago to do a project for Cork, uh, Cork Wars, and uh, it, our conversation led to this, uh, me being here this evening, so I'm thrilled to be part of this event. I'm not sure exactly what to expect, but I'm living in the moment. Just the way we like it, a little bit of fear and a whole lot of enthusiasm, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you all know the rules. There are three glasses in front of you. We hope that you can inspect them accurately, break them down, find out what pleasures reside in each of those glasses, score them appropriately. After about eight to 10 minutes, I'm gonna prod you not so gently, uh, hoping that you will shoot out, your first, shoot out your first round, refill with specimens four in the, the rock and roll decanter provided by Yes, Mr. Rick Grosinger, which we will talk about again later. Five and six. Uh, you'll have an additional six, eight, maybe as much as ten minutes to break down the last three wines. And then we'll have a nice little discussion to find out just how silly you really are. Good luck. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Grosinger, before we go any further, is there a common thread, uh, point of judicion, or reason that these six wines were selected? Yes, there are two... I, 
selected two flights of, uh, you know, three. Uh, there is a theme behind each flight. Um, I could tell you, but it might take away from the... Uh, you know, Secrets are much better left on blind, The blindness of this tasting. Um, Look, I'm, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first time I've ever seen this happen. This is going to be a big night. First, I've got a glass and bubbles in front of me, and that's just making me smile because it's just about oh, the first few weeks, 2014. Secondly, Ananin just winked at Rick. He's trying to win favor from us already? Oh, I think he's going to be the scourge of the deck right now. Okay, sorry. I think you kind of gave it away that the uh, f you just said the first wine is uh, sp wine. sparkling. I mean, we're I have this snack for discovering the obvious. I know you do too. Uh, it bubbles, so yeah, it is what it is. Uh, cheer, actually, on that note, cheers. cheers. Thank you for bringing bubbles. Sorry, uh, TV world. That's what we call dead air. Now, oh my God, the pompous nature of the way Scott was looking at it, swirling around. And, come on. All right, we're going to cover that topic a little bit later when it comes time to decanting as well. Now. Uh, first tasting where we've had three different clad contestants. Ananin's terrified he's going to head for the door any second, so he didn't even bother to take his coat off, which I can appreciate that. <laughs> Nick, he's like the cousin you can't get rid of. He's already figured out which spot on that couch he wants to call his own, and the kid's in the softest sweater I've ever seen. I, I, I love this guy. I, I just want to take him home and pet him and rub his belly. Scott, on the other hand, is a bit of a pickle because he's one wearing loafers, no socks, so there's a little bit of that East Coast thing. He does have a fairly formal and well-pressed shirt because that's just how he dresses himself. And he's got that pin from the Accord of Master Sommelier is on yeah, his lapel. Yeah. So he's a little bit, you know, I don't know if you love me. Maybe if I show off, it'll be great. So we're going to put a little bit of a thumb on him later. Now, I know the, the three palates at this table have seen some truly extraordinary wines. With Ananine's almost 10 years at the French Laundry, uh, the, the glories that have passed over his lips are of legendary proportion. Now, Nick is a bit of a dark horse because he comes from a fancy family, at least so he's purporting. But he's such a nice guy, I don't know if we can take this fella seriously. I mean, do you that. think he's going to be critical enough? That's what I'm concerned with. I think he's going to laissez-faire his way through. Oh, this one's fine, and this one's okay, and yabba, yabba, dabba, dabba. Yeah, I think that's all we're going to get out of him. Scott is really, in his past tastings, not only is he critical and thorough, he's accurate. Very, yeah. When he comes in the store and tastes wines, it is all business. Um, he brings me a lot of nice stuff. Right, right on. And that that's where, you know, having the talent, having the, the charismatic good looks and, and the the socks thing, I'm just not going to be able to let go of that. Can we get a close-up shot of that foot? Just just the sock, the Lack blue jeans. Socks. Yeah. I mean, it's January for freaking sake. We're obviously not in the Midwest. <laughs> Truly, we're poor people out there. I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> Have family back in Michigan and Illinois, and they're just freezing their sweet little butts off. So pull a cork on something rich and red, rub it around, and you'll be much warmer. Okay, now, <clears throat> whoa, 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 you watching this Nick guy? Up into the cheese, <laughs> terrified. Oh, oh, and a little dribble. He's so cute. Oh my that's good, god. That's a good clean spit. A good clean Let's see that left hand. Not Let me see the left not, hand. Not, not, Where's not. the left hand? Let me see. He's free, ladies. I, uh, I think you might want to check this fellow or fellas. You know, we're not that far from San Fran. He's cute enough. He's going to have a large audience. <laughs> All right, now Ananine, the fear, the intensity, and the smirk. God, the guy's got and the wink. Oh, man, no, I got one. You got one. All right. Beer. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice that there's two really attractive ladies behind me. Okay, never mind. It's not us. Um, now, Rick, I see that there are two red wines and a well, a glass of that fizzy wine. Right. And I, I'm really curious to, to peek a little, maybe just a little bit behind the curtain of the great and mysterious Oz. Uh, can you allude to what the connection is without giving anything away, or is that sacred? Well... Without giving too much away, they are regionally specific. Hot damn, I love what you're doing. Okay. Now, uh, let's get back to you for a moment, because uh, you are a fella of legendary proportion in this valley, Northern California, and I think the globe as a whole. So, a little something for the folks out there. How is it that you always seem to have a drop-dead gorgeous woman on your arm, and you are a walking catastrophe? I don't know. I'd say that that's luck. Okay, all right. I'm just going to, or I did something really good in a past lifetime. Oh, I love 
man, see, that's the broad thinking. That's, that's why people just gravitate to you. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're in Yountville or any other part of the world and you need advice on a particularly scintillating something to sip, give them a call. What was the number? 800-356-3970. We do most of our business over the telephone as opposed to uh, internet orders. Uh, we have a storefront, a tasting bar, really cool shop, uh, real laid back. We try and leave the pretension out on the sidewalk. So, uh, Which in Yelmville is pretty deep. Way past the knees, almost to the hips. Okay, now, <clears throat> gentlemen who have your three glasses in front of you, you are flailing. You have exactly one more minute to break down those three wines, evacuate your glasses, and jump into flight two. And I've been really kind. I've given you... Uh-oh, uh -oh, we have a question. Raise your hand. Ask it properly. Oh, shit. Wow. Yet another first, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right. Uh, all the, the good... All right. So let's disregard one. DDA, we need three fresh stems, please. See, ladies and gentlemen, even in the most hallowed of halls... Shit happens. Well, I'm probably not allowed to say that. All right, sorry about that. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, it's bad. It's bad. All right. Uh, man, I think the French laundry song is correct. Ananin, what was it that tuned you into that being corked? Give me like two, three descriptors. Well, it, it, it has a pretty. Uh, just I couldn't even smell the fruit, and there's a strong cork board type of smell to it. So. Okay, so it's all funked up. Correct. All right, thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, out there in the cyber world, when you smell a wine that smells like a cork board or just kind of seems all funked up, it's probably not good. So don't ever be afraid of your glass of wine. More importantly, don't ever be afraid of the snotty sommelier at the fancy restaurant who's saying, no, it's accurate. However, that's where their talent lies, and so they should be able to, like, I don't need The guy's been tasting swanky juice for a decade, and bam, straight away. So have you ever had a screw cap wine? that um is off absolutely yeah you uh, know what they call that it's screwed <laughs> not cork <laughs> okay gentlemen uh it is time to evacuate your first flight and jump into flight number two <clears throat> with this exercise this is also the first time that we've ever had a wine being uh presented out of a decanter now rick what in the heck is that beautiful gob of glass on the table that's a new project that we have uh, been working on for the past uh, few months. Uh, we developed these decanters um, uh, through, uh, well, an expression of uh, freedom because I feel that color is uh, judged in the glass as opposed to in the vessel that it's poured from. Uh, a lot of uh, lead crystal decanters break easily. Um, and. I mean, look at the damn thing. It's just way more fun than your uh, standard plain decanter. They're uh, hand-blown. They're made out of laboratory-grade Pyrex glass, and uh, the colors are fumed into them That's by using precious metals like gold and silver. Um, the company, uh, we're about ready to launch the uh, website and launch the company this year. It's called Donnan Decanters, D-O-N-N-A-N, um, and they're much more durable than... Uh, regular crystal decanters um Pyrex. yeah and uh, as you can see they're just uh they're gorgeous we have a lot of different uh different styles and colors so look at these monkeys rubbing a football this is just hilarious so we throw the ringer in there that's now the dead ringer because it was a corked glass and we called in for fresh reinforcements of new stems and and everybody's just so buffalo is it five is it four is it what was it three which one was the oh man oh god oh geez oh, oh golly okay now Flight number two. Scott jumps in straight away. All serious, all balls, all business. Man, we got to do something to loosen this guy. What, if you had a customer come through the door that looked like this guy, what are you going to show him? What, are you gonna, what, what do you think you should sell him? Oh, the expensive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Damn skippy. And uh, unfortunately, I don't carry that many imports for him because I know that he's a big fan of Italian wines. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, when he comes in my shop, it's, uh, you know, maybe... I have to I have to break out some uh, some weird goodies for him. Okay, all right. Anything uh, that's kind of striking your fancy as of late? Hmm. Well, last uh, last fall we uh, we did uh, a decent amount of the Parador. Um, it was a it was a Reserva wine that Steve Ventrillo makes. It's uh, a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon off of Atlas Peak and um, Tempranillo. 
and it's a, it was a Reserva. It was a 2005. We really loved it. Super cool. Actually, you and Steve look a little bit alike. Oh, well, we got a, a, a double thumbs up out of our producer, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, she's apparently a fan of Steve Ventrilo, as am I. Okay, now, back to the table. Uh, sweet Nicholas. Nick's just hanging in there, clinging on for life. This is the guy that fell off the boat, and they threw the line over to drag him back up, and it got caught in his wrist, so now he's hanging from the yard arm. Uh, I look forward to seeing his notes. Now, Ananine, on the other hand, j just the swirl. Oh, I wouldn't want to hurt my stem, so I must swirl so gently. Oh, he there's didn't a spill a drop. That was all pro. No, but there's a little Mrs. Downfire in there, man. I mean, come on. All right. Uh, that, well, look, are you seeing the mouth work on this barber guy? Still in there. <laughs> all around, up and down, top to bottom, left to right. That's why he's desirable. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, so there are three wines, all red, uh, all picked of some point of symbiosis. Once again, Nick doesn't know what to do with the spitter. Everybody else is coming. All right, we're, we're going to have to maybe give him a little hug later. I, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe if we feed him, he'll perk up. Okay, so we've got some fancy decanter. Uh, we've got one corked wine, a glass of bubbles, uh, and a lot of dark horses. I Wow, did you see the pen work on Ananin just then? Is that from signing super big checks, or is that just something that you learn, I don't know, from watching all the monkeys at the laundry? That, that looked like a gold pen signature on the side yeah. of a bottle. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right, this is getting exciting. Once again, Scott's going back in. Perfect 360. I think this guy's going to go to the Soviet Union. He's going to compete in the Olympics for swirling. Uh, this did, is you, did, you, did you notice the round oh, and yeah. round and then the up and down? How could you not? Yeah. And one thing that I don't know if our viewers know, um, you know, when you taste wine in the northern hemisphere, you swirl it to the left, always, right? Always like the way the toilet wise. goes, like yeah. the way the, yeah. the, the, it drains. Well, when you're in the southern hemisphere, you always want to do it to the right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I spent the first three weeks of the December in New Zealand, and, and I got to tell you, uh, it's a lesson well learned. I mean, we, we, there we were at Rippin' Cellars, ogling the view. Oh, I swirled all the wrong way. Spilled wine on everybody. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Okay. So, whoa, whoa. The dexterity of this guy? Wow. Let's see if he's as olfactorily dexterous as he is in his wrist. These, these small stems are probably a little underwhelming for him, you know. Yeah, they're definitely on the psalmo yeah. series. Of blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes. I, I'm very serious and very important. I have a very large wine glass. <laughs> okay. So, the funny thing to me about all of this is that every single one of these goofballs also has a glass of gin on that table. <laughs> Now, well, you know, that's that's the palate cleanser. True. That nothing nothing uh, clears it like a nice gin and tonic or just gin. Equal opportunity taster here. Um, OK, so back to Scott, the top, the bottom, the left, the right. Ladies and gentlemen, Cyborg, I hope you're drinking this in because this is just <laughs> sheer comedy. I mean, I can't wait for tomorrow to see what emails roll in on this one. Nick, sweet, sweet Nick. How it's, long has he been down here? When did, when did he come down from Oregon? I think uh, we should probably make that up. So he's been here now for about 114 years. And uh, he molts every 25 to 30 years. So he just let go of the chrysalis now about 10 weeks ago. So this is a fresh new skin for him. And so his ability to taste is going to be much more concise. So All these the, are going to be really young wines for him. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think that's probably accurate. Um, more importantly, he's getting nervous because he's turning red around his forehead. Could just be the biz. Once again, gin is a miraculous thing. Yeah, there we go. Don't itch it. Don't itch it. You'll make it worse. Okay. And then pretty soon Scott's going to have a rash and Ananine's going to be scratching and it's just going to be freaking awesome. Okay. Now, before we drift away to, to see what their notes say, I do have to put down that Ananine spends a lot of time on his wardrobe. The really fancy shirt tucked into the red pants and just the right amount of broken in on the shoes. Uh, that's a class act. That's a guy who not only knows his arena, but he excels at it. Yeah, it, it looks casual, but you know that it was, oh it was selected. We had a phrase for that back in school. Do you know how expensive it is to look trashy? 
and and he looks like a million bucks, so I can't even imagine. Uh, okay, so once again, this barber guy, the, the quick shoot back, the, the really aggressive smelling. I, I almost wore my shirt that looks like Ananese there. Really? Yeah. But you're just not yeah. that cool, apparently, no, so no, yeah. No, no. Uh -uh. Okay, all right. Well, you know, you're put together pretty well. I mean, I'd throw props at you. You shop in the fancier spots and here in the valley this and down San Fran. This is pretty pretty upscale for me. Coat and all. Look at me. I can't even really afford a coat. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. Um, we are climbing into that 10th minute, and I think these guys are as perplexed as when they first sat down. Um, I, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, actually, can I have that for just one sec? Yeah. Thanks, man. Ladies and gentlemen out there, <laughs> I think you now have an idea who you're dealing with. Okay, good. Now then, um, the head is dead. Poor Jerry. Okay, so the other thing I think to point out here is that Scott's also the drinker in the group. Look at the level of those glasses. The bucket, the bucket is not on his side. No, nor will it ever be. Round and round that my that wine may go on his man, tongue. Man but after my own heart there, absolutely. you know, real, real professional. Profession, seasoned professional. Seasoned, of course, salt, pepper, and booze. Um, Nick is, God, you know. The throat does taste. Absolutely. One of the more primary senses. Mm -hmm. It can clinch up. Nothing's going down. If it reflexes and it's something yucky, well, no, you're not going to drink that again. But if it's yummy, oh, it just opens up and allows it to happen. Yeah, and after that corked wine, I think that uh, Scott's pretty happy that uh, apparently, hopefully none of these are corked. L let's hope not, because they've all been perusing them back and forth, yeah. up and down, left and right. I can't believe I didn't check the wine before I uh, poured it. It's really... Well, you know, there's monkeys, and then there's angels, and uh, don't take this the wrong way, buddy. We're a couple of monkeys. Right. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Not an ape so much. <laughs> Although that new Planet of the Apes looks scared. Hell, I think that monkey's going to hurt me later, or ape. Okay, Nicholas. Look at that smile. It's just warm your soul. I, I, I need to get to know this guy. He's got to come over for dinner. I'm going to make spaghetti and meatballs for that guy. Okay. Now, Ananine, critical, thorough, methodical, and just so fastidious. His glasses haven't been more than an inch apart the entire tasting experience. So, Ananine, look at that camera and just give them a full blatant once-over of your sweet face. And maybe one of those wings. He's beautiful. Yeah, that, that does go. There it was, ladies and gentlemen. That was for you out there, ladies. That one was for you. Uh, wow. I, now Nick is sweating even more. Okay. Back to Mr. Barber. Not much velocity behind his spits. Have you noticed that? I did. It's a very gradual, almost gentle dribble. Uh, yeah. I, uh, when, I mean, when I spit, it's... it's Concise. It's powerful. Nobody is going to misconstrue mm. that. Uh, I'm also a little concerned that uh, is he a shake it once or shake it three times kind of guy? <laughs> I mean, have you seen the dribble? Or what do you? Th I mean, a crumpler or a folder? Uh, yeesh, I I don't even know if I want to know that answer. Uh, okay, so uh, boys at their gentlemen at the table, uh, you've got about thirty seconds to wrap this up, and then we're going to come over and play nice, nice because we've been kind of mean so far. Um, wow. So exciting. Uh, the decanter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen out there in Cyber, we're going to have a little talk about decanting once we've kind of calculated and tabulated the scores. Because I'm really excited to see what these guys feel the difference would have been if the wine had only come out of a 750. So, yeah, but I'm being nice because I'm being mean. Um, 10, 9, you know where we're going. 8, 7, 6, 5, uh, 4. Three, two, uh, one. Bing. All right, let's go over and meet these guys. Oh, thank you. That looks over. Now then, gentlemen, the esteemed accounting firm of Loose Town and Loose Town will be by momentarily to collect your tally sheets. Uh, they will then be astutely tabulated, and then we will come up with a winner. All right? Thank you very much. We've been wrong before. Thank you, thank you. But actually, on occasion. But this night, this night, I think is really going to be a decisive evening. So before we go any further, uh, Anani, as your closest hand on my left. Was there a commonality and overall sense of feeling about what was taking place this evening? <clears throat> Other than being the hero that said, well, that wine was cork. What else did you glean from this tasting? Well, I, I think overall the, the, the selection was really, uh, was pretty high. Okay. I think I 
tend to like all the wines. Um, Fabulous. There was one wine that I think was a ringer. Oh boy. Um, so I'll, I'll tend to think that most of the wines were domestic wines, but then one of the red wines could have been from Burgundy. But yeah, he worked for 10 years at the laundry. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, yes. uh, I'm very curious to see. Nicholas, uh, Nick, sorry. Uh, what's your impression of the flight? <clears throat> Uh, for me, it was a great learning experience. I tasted a lot of different wines I don't normally drink. I drink a lot of Burgundy, you know, but I do drink champagne. Um, oh, you poor soul. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, for me, um, there's a couple of wines that really stood out that I liked. Okay. Some that I thought were, you know, all right. Um, I liked, uh, I liked the length on, on a few of the wines quite a bit. Good okay. tannin. So yeah, so structurally well built, interesting, <clears throat> and we've got a nod for a couple that it could be five. Okay, excellent. Yeah. We will let the numbers tell us what your conclusions actually are, sir. Mr. Barber, fancy foot guy, uh, not a super fancy watch, but a good watch, and a pin on his lapel. You spend, you tell you, you spend all day in a tasting room. You can tell. I wish. I didn't have those shoes and the, yeah. uh, the watch yeah. to see how much they're gonna buy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you look at okay. We gotta yeah. Okay. Okay, Mr. Barber. Uh, same question as Nick. Uh, what was your general consensus of the overall five? Uh, well, I reaffirm that um, I love wines with acid. So obviously, my favorite wine was the bubbles. For sure, nice. um, but I also, um, you know, it was a pretty straightforward the kind of wines that I expect Rick to bring, which were I thought they were new world wines. I thought they were cool. I thought they were different, mm -hmm. and I thought they brought something to the table that was more than just what you expect to get from what we usually taste around here. So uh, I think it was a really solid flight of, uh, of really pretty interesting wines. I love a client or a guest who's mentally stimulated. You got it. Well done. Was there a particular wine that was like, holy shnikes, that's the one I want to drink? Other than the champagne, Other which we've bubbles, already yeah. dedicated, or dedicated. Actually, I thought wine number five was pretty cool. Um, wine which, five pretty cool! <laughs> um, which kind of goes against everything that I am about, if, um, if it is what oh, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was I'm pretty impressed with it. It was pretty good. Sometimes even us purists are, can be hedonists as well. All right. Nick, was there a particular <clears throat> wine, or actually maybe possibly a pair of wines, uh, mm -hmm. that really blew your hair back going, oh my god, that's what I want to drink later. I, I, mine was also number five. That was the number one wine. I love the complexity of the wine. Okay. Um, it just had a lot of different levels, length, uh, good concentration. It wasn't, you know, over, over oaked. Uh, there's a lot of great aromatics in the wine. It was beautiful. Okay. So kind of that perfect picture of fruit, texture, acid, and... Interesting. Yeah, okay. It was interesting. Once yeah. again, another mental sti stimulation. Look oh. at you just stimulating them mentally. Anani, last yeah. question. Yes? Was there a particular wine that you went, holy shnikes, I can't wait to rub that all over me later? <laughs> well, I'm oh, thinking, sorry, I'm, I'm curious to see which, what number one, uh, wine number two is, because that's the one that I, I was, uh. well, think it could be a Cote de Nuit. I like the tenant character that it has and um, I hope I'm right so Rock and, and if I am then I'll have a glass super cool again all right uh miss I'm sorry uh, Rick would you have no I was just gonna say I'm really thrilled that you like that wine because it's a, it's a special wine and <laughs> you know, right? it'll, okay. it'll, it'll it'll be really neat to unveil it. <laughs> 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 all right then Monsieur Lustau here we go on number five right so one number five. Roland Teb. Scott and, uh, and Nicolas Premachebri. You have a 12.5 uh, ah. and you have a 12. Black Sears Street. Do you like it? 16. That's good. Yes. What, uh, uh, what 12? Let's see, Scott. What was wrong with this one here? That's your least favorite of the flight, actually. Oh, this is the six then. Wait. Yeah, six, sorry. Because of the uh, mm. candy. Uh, That's five. Yeah, we were told our, a full five. Our favorite, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. favorite that, five. Yeah, that would be that. That's right. That would be one number six because of this I didn't count the, the 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 cocked one. So six. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm asking. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. Ah, ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Sorry. So, and you can now find out why the esteemed accounting firm of Bluestone Bluestone doesn't have a lot of clients. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's right. That's a fact. Then, in, in a 
beta testing phase right now. So. One Cristiani! So we'll put him back over here. So what okay. was wrong with uh, this one, Scott? Uh, I just got a lot of oak on it. Um, I thought the alcohol kind of stood out. It just, you know, it seemed pretty straightforward and simple to me, Andrew. Okay, and what about you? Uh, uh, do you like it? Can yeah, you it? I liked it. Yeah. I thought it was uh, it had a, a ton of blue fruit, soft tannins, and it didn't have it appear to have any flaws. So I, you know, I, I sort of graded accordingly. Clean, yeah. classic, yeah, clean, classic. Nothing exactly. unpleasant. Nothing. <gasps> Holy shnikes! Yeah, exactly. Just kind of right in that middle. Right. Zone. All right. Well, yeah. the Blanc Cristiani boys, you're good guys, ladies yes. and gentlemen out there. If you've never met any of these Blanc Cristiani boys, find them, love them, drink their juice. Next. Okay, uh, the next one we're gonna go is wine number five. Sorry, no, shit. Number <laughs> <laughs> six. The brilliance of a tarnished diamond, right. ladies and gentlemen. Okay, wine uh, uh, number, this is F. So that would be uh, uh, F. That's what One, two, three, five, or six. Let's go F. That's right. Let's open it. That's, we just got it. That's where we just discussed. Yeah, I just talked about one of the F, sorry. Yeah. Shit, yeah. motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're not supposed to curse. So, yes, I can. Particularly about your... Yeah. We are supposed to curse? Let me take this yeah. one off here. Oh. This is well, the book one. Well, fuck it, eh? I have no idea. That's right. gonna mess you up. This is... This is okay. It, 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 it. Moving on. Okay. And then now, we're doing wine number four. Number four, ladies and gentlemen in this magnificent decanter that I can barely reach it. Let me go find the original vessel. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. In Rick's absence, uh, what do you guys think of the decanter? Bam! Bjorn! Bam Bjorn. Ah. Jimi Hendrix would love it. I like it. Right. Do you smoke a lot of weed? <clears throat> no. But Liar. you could, <laughs> and that's the important thing. Keep in I mind, can't. Up in Mendocino, and apparently a little bit in Oregon, they consider right. the grapes to be the cover crop. So just throwing it out. So on this one, Nicolas, you, um, that was your least favorite. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought. Well, actually, no. Number one, number A was my least. Uh, eight, yeah. Yeah, but uh, D, number A. <laughs> so this one, I, th I really liked the fruit. I thought it was jammy. Um, it had. Um, I thought maybe that there was some alcohol present in the mid palate. And uh, perhaps, uh, but it was powerful, and there was a little tannin on the finish. I think it's a good wine, powerful wine. Um, yeah. And I need you give a good scores. That's yeah, nice. I, th I think overall I, I, I give good scores all, all across. I thought this wine has um, would please someone who likes wine with uh, lots of fruit up front, and also it seems to have plenty of acidity. So I thought from there I, I liked it. I liked the texture. I thought the the aftertaste was was, per, was clean and resonated nicely. So, do you think this one would have benefited of more of a decanting time? But yes, I think so for sure. Yeah. No kidding, Hell Mountain fruit benefits from yeah, decanting. I, I don't. Think <laughs> I am shocked. <laughs> I <am> mind blower. <laughs> awesome. That's and that's and that's the style that they're going for in this wine is a fruit forward, big, muscular, not scared of alcohol. Mm -hmm. We were we were just up at the vineyard the other yesterday, and. Um, Taste it through some of the older vintages, and that's oh, right you know they're 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 going for it for that big Hell Mountain style. Oh, it's a pretty big rock. Where are they at? What's that? Where are um, they? Ink Grade Road. Okay. Uh, past Anguin. Yeah, yeah. Down the hill. Oh, nice. Side. A good power site. Yeah. Um, he called it when we were driving down there. He said, "Yeah, it kind of looks like Axe Murdererville when you start driving down in there." <laughs> nice. A couple old Chevys yeah. up on yeah. cinder blocks. Those things. <laughs> there was awesome. an old vehicle. Nice. All right. Next. All right. Uh, we'll be revealing uh, number one. Ho, 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 ho. So what, what would it be? What do you think? Uh, anyone want to guess on the, the varietal of this one? Any idea? I thought it was Chardonnay? Yeah, I thought it was Montauk. What the hell? Where is it? Mm. 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 Guys? Throw them down. Yeah. Uh, I hear this, so I, I can, you know. Yeah, possibly uh, it's the Blanc de Blanc. I mean, a toastiness to it. It tastes like you know, champagne. Yeah, that doesn't taste like Chardonnay. No, it's passing wine. No, well, I think it's uh, domestic. Domestic? Yeah. Blanc de Blanc, yeah. All right, so Maybe. Scott, go ahead because that's uh, your second favorite uh, wine here. Oh! Ah, yeah, I kind of thought that would, might be it. And, uh, that's right, Bryce Lindbergh, ladies right. and gentlemen, Humboldt yeah. County. No, it's, wow. uh, it's nice. cool stuff, yeah. Um, that's kick-ass bubbles. 
I've admired so, that in the shop many times, and I thought it might be pretty cool, and it certainly is. It's really good. I like it. Of course, it sticks out, you know, as the only white and bubbly and acid wine, so, you know, gonna love it, of course. But I thought it was really good. I, I liked it a lot. It's very yummy on the yumminess scale. Rick, how much? Uh, this retails for $35 to $40. <laughs> we sell it closer to $35. Um, this has won the best sparkling wine in the state at the... Uh, State Fair down in Orange County or Los Angeles. Wherever they do those things. Wherever they do those things. Right. And the cool thing about this is that um, it's a much cooler climate up in Humboldt County. So uh, the grapes have longer hang time to achieve uh, physiological ripeness and flavor because you're only trying to get them to 19 or 20% sugar. So they, they get to hang on the vine longer, get more flavor. It's, um, it's, a, it's a great region for making sparkling wine. Possibly more so than the southern regions where it's warmer. Yeah, right. Nicolas, what do you think? <clears throat> I thought it was a fun wine, is what I wrote here. I like the sweetness, apple, floral, and I thought it was vibrant, good acidity. Yeah. I thought it was pretty solid for, for sparkling wine. I couldn't really tell. I think that I like the acidity of the wine, and uh, I think overall I gave it a pretty solid score. Yep. So hold on before you go any further. For those of you out in Cyberland, if you have fancy bubblehead friends that are snotty, check this in their glass and see what they think. They're all going to go, oh, this is really good. Where'd you find that? Oh, it's from Mendocino. Like, no, it's not possible. Humble, Humble, Humble County. County. Humble County. Where it really is further up a crop. It's yeah, a, that's a good it's point. It's a lot less expensive than Salas or something like that. So, yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay, moving on. Two. dum 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 <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> it means you've all been duped! Oh, there you go. There you go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Bryce from Pinot Noir from Humboldt County. Oh. Oh. Okay. The Burgundy Paris are weeping! Or yeah. really excited, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, and actually, first time I'm having wine from Humboldt, actually. That is kind of what I thought it yes. was. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right on. Here's yes. the first time, bro. Right yes. And May they all be this pleasurable. I did, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I like tenants. I like this style of tenant, this red fruit. I, uh, again, you know, there we go. And for you two guys, this is split uh, uh, fucking fucking. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what I would have guessed yeah. it was, actually. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I thought it was good. It was, uh, it kind of reminded me of Marin Pinot Noir. <laughs> you know, those marginal climates where it's got new world fruit, it's got <clears throat> juiciness, the rhubarb, that forest floor. But didn't quite have that burgundy like extra like oomph to it, you know. Uh, it was still cool climate, New World, and not. Is it lacking in the funk? No, no, it's good. <laughs> it just didn't have quite the, the extra earth. Yeah, exactly. extra minerality or this. Yeah, the minerality. That, yeah. I mean, the acid was there structurally. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it it matched, right. but there was just a something uh, I don't know what. Um, you know, it's a perfectly desirable yeah. wine. It just lacks a little mojo. It was good though. And I wanted to jump in. The wine that was cork was another Humboldt County wine um, mm. that it was, it was a Syrah mm -hmm. from a producer called mm. Cabot. And uh, mm. too bad it was cork, but I wanted to do a yeah, little Humboldt County flight because they're making some great wines ah, up there. Right. And a lot of people really don't get them down here. We're to, to, in order to get Bryceland, we either have to drive up there or drive, they have to come down. They don't distribute. We're the only people down here that sell it. Um, well, that's what I was trying to so Go ahead. I was just saying that was my second favorite wine. And I loved it. That's what I was trying to say with the cork. Bucks. It was like you could tell. Wow, it the thirty-two dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Then it was something. There was some good stuff here. in there. Oh, I talking about the the the, 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 the one. Yeah, oh. it was yeah. like underneath well, there. There was some some cool stuff. I thought it was Cab Franc. That's probably the corkiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was kind of making it seem that way. What a piracy load! Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I was talking about that Pinot. Pino, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was talking about Pinot. That's for sure. Yeah, pretty cool. Cabot. Cabot. Not to be misconstrued with cheese. Oh. It's not cheese. Oh, it's the, uh, that was it's rich red wine. wine. Yeah, that was no. a theme yeah, of the first yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Vermont wine. <laughs> ah, it all makes sense now because yeah. you mentioned that you had a a, 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 a sick a, a, little plan. Yeah, exactly. A theme going through the the, the first flight. So interesting. Ooh. There we go. And then our winner is right. Dun, 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 dun. Hot damn. Dun, 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 dun. Anybody else coming around? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is really good one. Every one of these. So what you think of the the coming? This is it? number five. Yep. Yours and Nick's happy, happy, joy, joy. 
Number five what on the it? chart. Number one in your heart. <laughs> oh, God. I can't see it, probably. Wow. So, Roland Teb, um, uh, Black Sears uh, uh, Vineyard okay. off of Howell Mountain. Okay. They made about 100 cases of this each year. Um, uh, Stephen Teb is the winemaker for Robert Craig uh, mm -hmm. Cellars. Uh, um, comes full circle. So it's, uh, it, it, and uh, Kevin Roland, my buddy, that's uh, their partners on this wine. Uh, we sold a ton of the 2009, which was a great wine. The 10 is just coming on now. Um, we're really uh, stoked to be selling this over the next few months. Uh, great Howl Mountain Cab with really good structure and balance. And Any idea what for the production? Uh how much of it is available? They made about 100 cases. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe 110. Okay. It might say on the back there, but it's, okay. not, it's not much. Right. Very, right. very, very, very small production. And uh, I'm proud to say that as far as I know, I'm the only shop other than the winery that sells it. Oh. Um, and one of, our, one of our customers' favorites, are, you know, over the, over the last year. Right. It uh, was very well received. Great, great bottle of wine. So congratulations, Kevin and yeah. Stephen. Uh, you guys did a masterful job of managing Tannin in the 2010s. That's a really powerful site. And 73 bucks? Wow. Uh, that's the full we sell it for closer to 65. 65? Mm hmm. Yeah. So if you want to broker a better deal, talk to that guy. Yeah, and for Single Vineyard, Howell Mountain Cab. From Black uh, Sears Vineyard? For 65 bucks. I mean, you really can't beat it. Also, the Bjorn is at 65 bucks too. So um, maybe 70, somewhere in there. 65 to 70, I forget. But um, it's th th those are really solid Howell Mountain wines, especially for the money. Right on. Right. No doubt. Nice selections. Uh, Mr. Grosinger, thank you so very much. Cheers. 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 Now, before we depart from this table, we're going to have a, a little bit of a QA. and a It could be slightly fanciful. We're each going to make up a story on why decanters exist. Now, as I'm the host, I get to go first. I believe that decanters were actually a very succinct source once told me that decanters didn't come into fashion until the French royal court deemed them necessary. So that prior to the wine being offered to the almighties, uh, princes, kings, queens, uh, there was someone that tasted what they were going to drink and they wanted to visually inspect it before it even went into the glass. So it was decanted first, then presented to whomever the taster was, and that was generally because it was toxic and poisonous. Someone had wanted to off that royalty. Mm -hmm. And so they'd let them founder and die and say, oh, we will probably drink that one. Decanters didn't much exist prior to this. Now, then, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Mr. Grosinger, what is yours? Uh, bad labels. Right. On labels. wine, yeah. So when you have a hideous label, um, as they did way back in the day, uh, like medieval it. days, you know, the pr uh, printing presses and the calligraphy and everything was sometimes horrible. Yeah. So they invented decanters so that you wouldn't be humiliated when you had a bad label at your table. Interesting. Okay. That's why. All right. So, Underneath. So, so far, these are like make believe stories, right? You're just making it up, or is it? Oh, really? No, no, this is true. <laughs> I looked it up on the uh, internet. Oh, okay. Wikipedia sure. had the same yeah. definition. Of course. Yes, yes, yes. So it must be real. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need I mean, I, it's, it's hard to, I think you, what you said appears to be sound correct. I think very that uh, uh, decanters are purely functional. Okay. Like you said, if you had, you just happen to have wine, but you, would, you just want to serve it, you can possibly serve it from uh, the vessel where it was stored in. So you might pour a little bit in the decanter and then dispense it at the table, whatever the case might be. And then at that point it became more of a fancy situation fashion where fashion. fashion. Okay. And, yeah, exactly. Okay. I suspect that that's how it all began. All right. A, a plausible story. Yeah. There we go. Not well researched, but well founded. <laughs> so. Now if you want to talk about decanters with fashion. Yeah. Fashion, bam, right, shablam. No, so yeah, I do like this decanter. It's a pretty well balanced, intricacy, pretty light. I think the thing with decanter sometimes they can be the look it mm -hmm. defies the functionality, mm -hmm. and I think this one seems to to kind of capture both. Sweet Nick, thank you. Your ass is now in the frying pan. Well, we all like to breathe. This so is does, true. So does wine. Um, okay. But I would say for um, sanitation and to keep it classy, you know, it looks good. It looks good on the table. Okay. Um, 
What's the and oldest when, decanter you've ever heard of or know of? <clears throat> you know, I haven't really studied decanters that much or really delved into that aspect of the wine world. So um, I have a lot, a lot to discover. This could be a, <laughs> a, 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 a show in itself, a decanter. Yeah. I, I'm yes. aware, but what do you think this is? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? It's called job security. Come on! The first ones would have been oak, though. I'm sorry? Guess, I would guess the first ones would have been made of oak. Oak, Back you say, not day. earthenware. Yeah, that's right. I threw it out there. <laughs> Shablam! Just plump right on the table. Rocks, yeah. <laughs> All right, and Mr. Barber, a man who knows the objectionable objectivity of the useful qualities of a decanter. Well, we always say uh, there's three re reasons why you would decant wine. <laughs> you know, one is to aerate a young wine, uh, soften the tannins. Two is to remove an older wine from the sediment in the bottle as it precipitates out. And then, of course, three is uh, pretension on the guest part. They just want it. Just to looks really good <laughs> exactly. to the client. Yeah. So, you know, you just say, "Okay, fine, we'll decant it for you." But you know, I don't know the history of the decanter, but I know the, the history behind the shape of this one. Uh, this is what they call a captain's decanter. It is because the captains on the, the ocean-going vessels would put the wine in this for the sake of the. The boat's rocking back It's going to slide a little up, slide a little up. It's a wee wobble, it'll fall out. It's a wee wobble, wobble, exactly. Okay. It's not okay. going to fall over and spill your wine all over the place. So, And that is clutch when you're exactly. stuck 3,000 miles away from any point of land and you just need a little bit of civilization. And really, who were the people that were on the boats drinking these wines? You know, the British and the French. And, you know, of course, they learned to have their claret. And their, uh, well, the Americans weren't a Madeira, but whatever. That's different, but... You know, Good times. Still, and, and, and for people that drink young wines, which a lot of Americans do um, for lack of patience, decanting a wine is so important in order to get the flavor, the maximum flavor potential out of the wine. Um, so often when you drink a bottle of wine and you don't decant it, that last sip in the bottom of the bottle is the best sip. You're, and once the wine's finally breathed and opened up, you're like, oh my God, it's so good. Well, if that last sip could be the first sip because you decanted the wine, it increases the value of the wine in your mouth. It increases your um, experience. Um, it's something that not enough Are you, are you just telling me buy two do. bottles, drink the first one fast, and then the second one ready to go when you're ready for it? Right. Okay. See, that's yeah. by design. That last sip is the best of way. Yeah. Well, I, 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 think, I, I think that the whole decanting thing is a, is still a move, like a moving target. It's, okay. there's the aesthetics of it. There's people who care in some fashion, some people who don't, work to whom it doesn't really matter. And nowadays that we don't really serve wine in tiny little glasses, mm -hmm. you don't really, it's not uniquely critical to decant wine if you're gonna have a nice Riedel or Spiegelau or Stolzo, whatever stem where you have. A decanting stem? A, 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 yeah, a, a vessel that's big enough where you can aerate the wine mm -hmm. correctly the first time <clears throat> around because it's, imagine you're in a place where you don't have a, someone to decant the wine for you, right? You don't have, they don't have. I don't have at home. I don't have, I mean, I, I don't have I a sommelier at home. I'm the, I'm home. the only person at home, so I, I you know, no one decants the wine See, for that me. raises another I point. I do it for myself. Why do people not have personal Their own songs, exactly. It's, it's just, you know. Exactly. <laughs> well, someone think of the logistics on this so we can make some money and not have to do this. Exactly, so. <laughs> Ladies anyway. and gentlemen, uh, I thank you all so very much. It was an absolute pleasure. Rick, brilliant wines, man. Thank Absolutely you. brilliant. Thank you very Grosinger's much. Thank wine. Thank you. www.grosingers.com. In Yountville, he's got an 800 number. You can figure all that out. Gentlemen, raise a glass. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. For those of you Cheers. fine folks out there in Cyber World, Cheers. we will do this again yeah. on the first Monday of next month. Matt Simpson signing off from 2014. Woo! Welcome to Tasting in the Dark. Good night. Woo! Good night. Yeah.